we're going to have a look at how to create a seamless texture for one that is not currently seamless. Now, stone or brickwork or timber are often those sorts of ones that we'd like them to line up and they should look natural, but they don't always do that because of the way the image has been taken. Now, what we're trying to do effectively is to create an edge, which lines up with an edge on the side, and a top, which lines up with a bottom. And so we can see in terms of this stone doesn't line up with these stones. Now, that's a theoretical sort of thing, and, and we could use our uh, guidelines just to see how that works, but there's no way that we could ever make those join by guessing or by doing it this way. So the way that we change our image to allow us to be able to do this is by using filter other offset and this allows us to move the edges of the picture so that they're now in the roughly in the middle of the page so here we see that we've got this edge line here and we've got this edge line here and we press OK because it doesn't matter now it's important that I'm doing this with only uh, the original image, I could be using a duplicate at this point, it doesn't really make a difference. I could now go layer, new layer by copy, so I'm now going to uh, do this with a, a new image. Um, but effectively, my image was never good to begin with because it wasn't seamless, and I haven't destroyed it, I'm now just having the ability to make it better. Now, this takes a bit of artistic creativity, because what we need to do is to blur or to recreate the rock to make it work in a natural fashion. So this can take quite a bit of work. With other materials we can use other tools and we're just going to have a look at some of those tools to see how they work. Such as our spot healing brush or our healing brush. This allows us to choose an area and I'll make it a bit smaller. An area that's not quite working so I'm just going to draw a bit of a brush over this area and let go and see if Photoshop can figure out how to join it and make it work. So we see that in some areas that's not terrible. But this area here doesn't work. So let's try it again. Still doesn't work. It looks a bit fuzzy. It's not bad. So just by using this brush it's starting to make some of the areas work and it's also making some of them get worse. So it's sort of luck of the draw when we're using So I'm just currently going uh, Control alt delete or command alt Z, sorry, to undo or repeat undo. I could also go edit, step backwards. Uh, Z, not delete, because that will shut down your computer. Or we can use other sorts of tools where we want to stitch the image together. We do have a few different options, so let's just look at those. So we had the spot healing brush. We have the healing brush that works slightly differently by choosing that source point and then replacing something, and so we see that that's not going to work. Now to use the, the healing brush tool well, or the one that I'm probably going to use instead is use my clone stamp tool, we can pick up a setting, pick up an area, and we can redraw. Now what I really want to do in this instance is try to find something that I can copy to make this work better. So realistically what I'm trying to do is to create another mortar joint and I'm trying to do it in a way that makes it look natural and create, trying to create something that looks natural is always difficult. So what I might do before I do anything else is duplicate this long shape or even split this long shape in half to try to uh, make another mortar joint. So I'll find a mortar joint that I want to recreate Let's use this one. So I'm going to use my clone stamp tool, remember, and I'm holding down Alt on my keyboard to use that as the target. And now I want to draw a line through this stone, which is effectively copying it from somewhere else, to create a duplication or a duplicate of that mortar joint. So it's a little bit strange, but it's not terrible. It's, it's working pretty well. Now, of course, the way, way it's joining with this rock is terrible, so I need to fix that up. I need to, again, find another situation where I've got a nice mortar joint. 
let's use this one here and then try to represent that in a way that works let's copy it again so I'm creating a, a gap between the stones so this is one of the slowest sort of aspects of this process but it helps to get it right now if I've got little slithers I can touch them up and I can make my joints a bit better but overall what am I trying to do I'm trying to make it look the same so here I'm going to just continue the color of this stone down and, and meld it with this other rock because the, the rock works quite nicely it's just the colors wrong and I need to fix up this mortar joint again because that's not working Now if I'm trying to do mortar joints with brick, that, that does make that a lot easier. When I'm trying to do this with stone, obviously I've got a lot of different colours. So the colours make it slightly more difficult to do. And again, that's why I was saying that this sort of work requires a little bit of artistic touch. Let's try to do that here and make this look like it's one stone. So I have to go up and down and across all the ways across that um, relationship between the original top and bottom of the picture. Effectively what I've done is change or reorientate the picture. So instead of the top and bottom being separated, they're now together and the middle of the picture is now on the edge, which means we won't have that issue next time. Now this is really bad one here so let's make this all this darker orange one that wasn't very well done and then we need another mortar joint another idea is the further away we are from the original instance the more realistic it will look if we try to copy a mortar joint that's too close to its origin point it tends to look a bit fake Getting there. Obviously, I, I had to work pretty hard. You didn't see this before I made this video to find one of my textures that was bad. A lot of them were seamless and already didn't have this issue. So, my point being, if you can find a seamless texture to begin with, then you're not going to have to do this process. So, that would be advisable. However, it's not always possible. Sometimes you want a particular texture and you just can't find the one that you want maybe it's you've taken a photo and when we take a photo then it's very unlikely we're going to get a seamless texture so the only way then is to create it yourself okay let's go up to the top of this image down to the bottom see how we're going okay we've still got a few to go we need another mortar joint here, so let's find one to copy. Uh, currently I'm working with a, um, a brush size of 44, so that's giving me a good rough, large brush, but if I wanted to do this in more detail I'd need to decrease the size to be a bit more exact. I'm going to 
do here. Let's do some more mortar joint. Starting to get there. I probably need to just make this a bit smaller to make it a bit harder to get a bit of a hard edge because it's currently a bit odd. Right, there we go. And I think, let's just zoom out. I think we're finished. Oh, I'm just missing the top. Let's fix that one up. Get back to our one color. Let's try it over here. Well, sometimes you can be a bit more clever than others. Great, so save. And now to see if this works, what we're going to do is offset, filter, other, offset. And we can see now no matter where we move this or where we go, we don't have in vertical or horizontal any more joints. Now, that's pretty good and this means that this texture is now working. So we've dealt with the seamless texture. There is no seam, but the next issue we're going to have is a repeatable pattern and that's based on the fact that this wall isn't very large. So it would be great for a detailed uh, representation or texture or visualization, but it might not be very good if we're trying to create a, a large wall where where we have a lot more stones than this. So to see if that's working, what we might quickly do is image adjustment, canvas size, and we're just going to duplicate this again, 56.44, 37.61, ah, oh, silly me. Before I do that, lay a new layer by copy, image adjustment, let's do that again, canvas size, 56.44, 37.61. Now we'll do that. Uh, lay a new layer by copy. And then that is just our command J, command J. So it's it's working, it's seamless, but we can see that there is some stones that stand out a little bit too much. Don't worry about that little white gap. That's just because of the way I placed it. It won't be visible. What stands out? What can we see that is a problem? This, these color stones here are a little bit too dominant. So they're meaning that our wall isn't very good, uh, doesn't look very seamless. We could do a few different things to make this be fixed. Uh, we could start to we could duplicate this and save this as an image which is a larger image and then start to edit some of these individual bricks so we're changing a quadrant or a quarter of the image at a time and effectively making an image which has some uh, repetition in it but also we're disguising that repetition so we could do that uh, but what we're often doing by creating that process is compounding errors so we're just going to save this as an image for now. We're going to put it into ARCHICAD potentially, map it onto our wall and see if it's an issue. Because if it's not an issue and we don't see those repeating bits of stone, then 
perhaps we shouldn't be worried about it. So we'll just save this to be able to uh, use it again. We could save it as a, a Photoshop or a TIFF file if we wanted to save the multiple layers, but I, I don't really care about doing that. So we'll just save it again as the JPEG, same name, so it's just being replaced. This one's been called copy, but it doesn't matter. And that's it.